Welcome back to the channel guys. Thanks again for joining me, Jason Pizzino, on the channel for cryptocurrency updates and chart analysis. Today, I'm going to start with Twitter, but we have a ton of news. When does it ever stop in cryptocurrency? Bitcoin dominance has broken through the support, so we're going to check that, that out on the chart shortly. Ripple XRP, sorry fanboys, that is mooning. We were looking at that over the last three videos, so go back and check those out as well if you want to understand how we have spotted that structure in the charts. Up about 30% today, we'll look at that as well. And I will check out some small cap cryptos which are looking like they're setting up. They're cryptos that we have covered before on the channel. So stick around with that, we'll get to those in the end. But the major news today is of course XRP crushing it. It's going up. If we're going to make some gains in US dollars and in Bitcoin, XRP is the play at the moment. But I also want to look at XLM, Stellar, Stellar Lumens. That tends to move as XRP moves. So if you miss out on XRP, then there is usually a backup there of XLM. Not financial advice. No, there are no buy signals here in today's video. We're pretty much just looking at the charts and then analyzing them using technical analysis from GAN, from Wyckoff theory and many other sources. So this is the way I'm interpreting it. You guys need to do your own research as well. Starting here at Twitter, I just put this up 45 minutes ago. So we're at about 6 p.m. Eastern time in Australia. You guys in the US, if you're watching or Europe, thank you very much. Let me know in the comments down below what you're loving the look of today. I should make mention, hit the subscribe button bell notification icon if you're new to the channel and like the video up just like I'm going to like up my own post on Twitter here. This is a big one I think. How many X's do we have left in the crypto total market cap during this bull market cycle? So we're currently just shy of $2 trillion. So as I'm recording we're at 1.985 trillion. Now we have a 2X or 100% to a 4 trillion market cap, a 3X or a 200% to a 6 trillion market cap. So basically we're getting a, a double to the 4 trillion, triple to the 6 trillion, 4x to the 8 trillion, 5x to the 400%. Don't worry if you don't get these figures, I usually get them wrong. I'm pretty sure these are it. I did look them up. Most people you know screw up these x's, you know, we always just think 2x is a 200%. So at the moment it's very interesting that most people think we've only got a double left. Okay, let's say a third of people think that and nearly a third think we have a 200% left in the total market cap of the this current bull market cycle. If we took both of those, say somewhere between a 2x and a 3x, that sends us at around, what, 2.5x, say 150%, say $5 trillion market cap. Question for you guys, would you be selling out a lot of your position as we approach the $5 trillion market cap? Or do you think we're gonna to go to $8 trillion market cap, $10 trillion market cap? This is the overall cryptocurrencies. This includes Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the other 9,000 cryptocurrencies that are out there. That's what I'm measuring here. So it's only 200 votes. I only put it up 40 minutes ago. I'm gonna post this on YouTube as well. So make sure you're on Twitter and YouTube. I spent so long on just this poll because this is basically an exit strategy on its own. Of course, there's only 200 votes. And why would you believe just 200 random people on Twitter? That's the other story. But I think it's interesting nonetheless to think, think that uh, 64, 65% of people are only seeing the market go this far. Look, let's see what happens over the next few days. All right, so the market cap from uh, crypto coin, coin market cap, I should say, nearly 2 trillion. Bitcoin sitting at 58,800, Ethereum 2,000. One of the best gainers has been Binance as it broke through those highs at around 310, $320. We've, we haven't looked back. We've just been straight up with Binance. XRP makes its name heard again, uh, moves back closer to a dollar. That's crazy. We haven't got there for a long time, XRP, but we're gonna look at it against Bitcoin as well. That's the most important chart here. Cardano slips, Uniswap still holds eighth position. Litecoin, maybe it'll see its day soon. Everyone's still waiting on Litecoin. Chainlink rounds out the top 10, and I definitely see these oracles still making another move. <coughs> Excuse me, back to Twitter for a moment, because we were looking at this just yesterday. Which crypto sector will shine in April? DeFi, Layer 2s, NFTs, IDOs. So 
DeFi, let's, obviously we can include the oracles in there with Chainlink, Layer 2s, Zillica, something we've been watching, and OMG. So keep an eye on that stuff. NFTs definitely look like they are slipping at the moment. Okay, I know I usually have to make mention to that. I don't think it's long term for NFTs. It's a short time. Let them breathe again and come back. Fear and Greed Index has begun to climb day by day. 71, 72. Last month, 76 was extreme. Now we're at 75, which is still greed. But we, we push up one more point. We'll be at 76. Coin market cow. Berlin hard fork coming up for Ethereum. Significant event here. 14th of April. That could be another reason that Ethereum is beginning to break out into new all-time highs. We'll see what happens. You know the old buy the rumor, sell the news. Berlin hard fork, whether that gets delayed, whether it's going to happen, is it going to have a huge effect? I guess we'll wait and see. Coin market cal again. Uh, basically looking here because of engine. Engine's got a lot of stuff coming out, but I don't see it moving too much on the charts yet. I think it will have a move if everything else gets going, especially with the Bitcoin dominance dropping. Moving on to some news. I'm going to watch this after I post this video. It's two and a half hours long. I get it. Most people probably won't watch it, but I'm just making mention of it because these are some areas that I like to get some news from. This is a, a interview with Uniswap's, uh, here we go, Genesis presents, uh, Genesis present and beyond with Hayden Adams. So check this one out, two and a half hours. I'm going to put it on fast and then uh, basically just listen to it in the background maybe when I'm driving and tonight as well after this, maybe when I'm eating dinner or something like that. But yeah, you can find it on cryptonews.com. If you're interested in Uniswap and understanding pretty much everything there is around it, especially with a potential move coming up as well and version three uh, getting implemented, it's looking pretty good. All right, crypto news oversupplied NFT market sees interest and in sales plunge. Let's just look at the headlines here. Active market wallets are down, unique buyers are down, unique sellers are down, primary sales are down, secondary sales heavily down. So that's no wonder that we're seeing a little bit of a cool off on the NFTs. Good time to keep watch of it. It could be a month. It could be this month that it continues to go. We don't know. But if it doesn't, it might be one month, three months, whatever. Just keep them on your watch list because that is the time when they're good to buy. And then they start to boom and take off and people wonder why they didn't see it. It's because they don't have it on a watch list. They don't have a, a way to keep tracking this. Now, I'm going to get through another few bits of news on Ripple, XRP and Bitcoin. But first up, I went through this entire article. It takes a little bit to read, but if you're interested, here you go, 12 minute read. BitClout. So this is like a new Twitter, here you go, tokenized Twitter personalities. Twitter type Reddit style decentralized social media platform. There's a bit of controversy around the whole thing. I've highlighted a few points which I uh, think make, you know, give it a little bit of sense. Basically, if you can mix speculation with social media, you can have an amazing product. This will change the world for the better, says Diamond Hands. So we get Diamond Hands from about BitClout, which went live last week. <clears throat> so if you're still unsure, Inside BitCloud, the dystopian social network with big backers and vocal critics. So like I said, it's like a decentralized Twitter style thing with big backers. Now, thinking about the backers, I've got them highlighted further down here. Uh, venture capital investors, Coinbase Ventures, Winklevoss Twins, big, big money. They, they're holding nearly 170 million. The way I also look at this is for us guys playing with less than you know $100 million, we probably can't afford to throw a ton of money into a lot of these big name projects. Well, some of us can, but overall, these guys are probably doing the same thing that is a good plan for small investors. If you have 10,000, 20,000, you throw a grand at a few different projects after you've done your research and you wait for that big 10X, 20X, 50X, maybe even 100X, which these guys are probably doing, you know, if they're throwing 10 million, 50 million in per deal, uh, then they're waiting for those big returns. And if 99 of them fail, they've made it all back on one big bet. And that's essentially what we can do as little guys as well. But obviously the monetary return is going to be a lot different. So when I see that, where I'm getting at is just because you see Coinbase and venture capitalists and Winklevoss twins and all these big names investing into a project doesn't mean the project is going to make it. We see Binance investing in a ton of projects and some of them are rug pulls. 
Some of them don't make it. Some of them fail. Some of them close up shop. Just like the, uh, the CEO of, of this, BitClout, created something which the Winklevoss tw twins have already uh, invested in, and that closed up shop last year or the year before. It was in 2018, and that, that also flopped. Uh, I've got a few little details down here which I'll get to. But essentially, they don't need to work out just because the big guys are investing in it. They're doing the same thing, just throwing a ton of money down on different uh, coins, projects, whatever it is, hoping that one of them sticks. All right, BitClout now holds over 3,200 Bitcoin, currently worth nearly 170 million. Diamond Hand says the vast majority of those Bitcoins came from its well-heeled investors. Illicit also includes Sequoia Capital and Reddit co-founder. More big names, big names on top of the big names I just read. As for BitClouds, 170 million stash. Dumberhands assured Decrypt, which is the news platform here. Neither he nor BitCloud developers will use it to pay themselves. It's hard to cash out. That's a bit of the controversy here as well. Once you've put your, your Bitcoin into the project, it's very hard to get it back out, if at all, at this stage. Despite such backers and a spate of hype basis, uh, closed up shops. This is what I was just talking about earlier. So Basis was created by Nada Nader Al Naji. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. You guys can correct me. Uh, so here's the uh, here's Diamond Hands, who is the creator of BitClout. So they created, well, he created Basis, Basis, and then that closed up shop. So a little further down, this is from Kathleen Brightman, another skeptic a highly regarded crypto entrepreneur and co-founder of Tezos. Okay, so Kathleen is co-founder of Tezos, a top 30 cryptocurrency. All right, so she sees BitClout as a blatant money grab and said its attempt to commodify individuals creates an ick factor that is especially off-putting to women. It will be a disaster, so she's not for it at all. That's pretty straightforward. Moving on, so that's BitClout. Moving on, MicroStrategies. They bought another 15 million worth of Bitcoin and it takes their total up to 91,579. Fresh patch batch of Bitcoins was purchased at an average price of 59,339 per Bitcoin. That takes Michael Saylor's uh, total, the average price to $24,311 per Bitcoin. And we already know that they hold around 91,579 Bitcoin. That is micro strategies. Oracles, this news piece is just talking about Oracles on the move, Band Protocol, Deer, Zoracles, etc. Mainly because I don't want to attempt saying this, Orion Chain, so I just went ahead. Band Protocol was something that we have been looking at on the channel, something I have been invested in. I sold out most of it, or well, maybe half of it, I have to go back and have a look, but I still hold some Band. Deer, I really like the look of, but it just doesn't have the marketing there to push it. I believe it's going to do well, but the marketing is just, it's not there like the other projects. And we know that's really important in a bull market. I did watch <clears throat> a uh, CEO interview. I believe it was a CEO interview on uh, Brad Laurie's channel. And uh, I'll show you him on Twitter as well. So Brad Laurie is a great, he's another Aussie YouTuber here. Um, actually, I'll just leave a link to it in the description for you guys. He does a lot of great work when it comes to interviewing the CEOs of companies. So if you want to do extra further research, Brad Laurie's channel is, is a good one for that. Uh, so back here on Oracles, that's pretty much what I was getting at there. Oracles are moving, it's DeFi, so we're just, in, you know, just talking about that a little more with those movements in the different sectors of cryptocurrency. Grayscale, big news, 100% committed to making biggest crypto fund an ETF. So this is very, very big for Bitcoin crypto news. They're talking about when the SEC approves a Bitcoin ETF, uh, they're going to basically, I would assume, convert their fund that has a cryptocurrency already that is holding the Bitcoin, uh, and then they turn it into a huge crypto ETF. But that, that's what they were saying earlier, that they, this has been their plan from day one when we launched in 2013. So converting the 50 odd billion dollars worth of crypto, or they said here 39 billion in the grayscale Bitcoin trust, so probably somewhere in the 40 billions in total over to a ETF once it is approved in America. They just think it's a matter of uh, when, not if. Massive news. When that happens, that is going to skyrocket something ballistic. XRP, we're going to get to these charts. 
XRP, uh, basically we've seen it push, we're somewhere up around 30% in, a, in anticipation of today's Ripple SEC hearing. So maybe by the time you've watched this, the hearing has already come out, so you already know the news. Moreover, the XRP community is nursing hopes that the SEC will clarify today that third parties selling XRP such as exchanges or retail investors cannot be sued by the SEC for any future activity. If this happens, all exchanges and investment funds that have suspended trading XRP for US customers would likely resume trading within a week or two. So people are betting on basically the SEC saying they won't sue exchanges. And so this is very news heavy driven, heavily news driven. That's why I don't tend to enjoy trading these sorts of events. I prefer just looking at the charts and then moving into them. However, saying that, the charts had a fantastic setup which we have covered on the channel for a couple of days now. But I'm looking at XLM as well, which is stellar. So this is just a little bit more on Nexo, which is facing a lawsuit over liquidating XRP. Nothing much to it. Basically, they sold off some XRP once the uh, the hearing or once the SEC was saying they're filing to sue XRP. So a little bit of news there on X Nexo basically getting sued. Moving on now. I said I was going to show you two smaller caps, two which we have covered on the channel already. These have been making a move. DFI money, which is YFII, 123 million market cap. Mantra Dow. You guys have asked me about this a couple of times. Are you still bullish on it? What do you think of Mantra Dow? 130 million so far. It's you know they're they're similar. They're around that similar price point. Mantra Dow. I'm looking at as well. They've got a bit of, a fair bit of news coming out. Plus they are part of the IDOs. So the initial DEX offerings, they're a, a, a big company that is getting a lot more of these projects coming on board that are receiving funding on their platform. So whether these things blow up into the multi-billions of dollars, I definitely think they're going to do quite well as the narrative seems to shift to these platforms every so often. We saw poker starter heat up and I definitely think these are going to take the show at some point. Right now, they're not completely in the spotlight, which is the best time to be buying in. My opinion, of course, not financial advice, no buy signals are here. But I'm making mention of them if you want to do your own research. DFI money, they have been accumulating. Look at these charts. That is what we look for. And we're beginning to get that break, not just a chart which is dead on the downturn, but you can see here, see the higher, the lows are getting higher and higher and higher and we're beginning to get a break above old levels. This is confirmation. This is what we look for, not just something that's dead and going down or something that is shot up. See, whenever these things just shoot straight up, then you could be waiting months and months and months until something actually happens. So those two are definitely on my list. Uh, I don't have any yet, but I really, really like the look of these and they're a reasonable market cap, nothing super tiny, but 100 million is not too bad to get us into the multi-billions of dollars potentially. We'll see. All right, on to the charts. It's been long enough. The massive breakdown here, Bitcoin dominance. We're watching this all week. We've been watching it for many months now, since January, since the double top. And we are waiting for our targets to hit 54 and 50. The breakdown through this low of 57, 58 has occurred. Let's see it get uh, a little further down and close below it because this week isn't over. I'm on a weekly bar chart here. Nothing fancy, no colors, cut the noise out. Just look at the data. That's what I've got here in terms of white bars. If you want to get a little fancy, here are the candles, red down. And basically we want to see it close under this level of 58. We've got another five days, 16 hours left in this week. The close is important because that gives us a signal. Closes are signal, so keep that in mind. Closes of weekly bars are a macro look at charts, so even more important than dailies or four hours or hourlies, whatever it is you're trading on. Weekly macro is what we're looking for. Breakdown, fantastic sign. Bitcoin continues to trade under its all-time high, but that definitely looks like a nice big wind up. I don't know about you guys, but winding up is always a good sign. We did see some volume come in yesterday and push it back to these highs. We have not been able to close above that 59,000 and a bit level. We got close, $59,003, and yesterday was $59,125. So if we do get a close, I wanna see it above the 60,000 level. That would then confirm for me, we're ready, almost ready. One close isn't enough, but it is a big sign, very big sign. We're not far from that now. Just a thousand bucks on a Bitcoin, 
Sounds like a lot, but when you do it in terms of a percentage, it is only 2%. So 2%, 2.5% for confirmation. I'm happy to forego 2.5% for added confirmation to swing the probabilities in my favor. Now, you know, I've been looking at these lower levels as well. If we get back down there, fantastic. If we don't, I'm not too phased. It has been a long time in this area. We're winding up now. So let's just wait and see. If we get a nice dip down, that would be fantastic. 54, 55, just to clear out some of the weak hands before we go again. Not a bad spot. And then, of course, you know, I'm still hopeful of a 50. Maybe we trend down slowly. And that gives the rest of the market time to uh, bleed out against the Bitcoin dominance and take off with the rest of the alts. Of course, we don't want to see a dump because that will probably scare the rest of these alts. Ethereum, Ripple, XLM, a quick look at BNB before we move on to the others. It is on its way. Let's move this back to the bars. It's on its way up. You know, we've broken through this top. This was the area that we're looking at. This was a big confirmation bar for me. So is that one there. So at around that 280 through to 310, Good confirmation that's where i added to my binance and now we're up at around 380 break through the tops you've got if you are interested in this there's a link to the investor accelerator down below learn how to trade stress-free investing and trading for long-term success link down below 12 month membership go and check it out uh we've also got bnb and then i also want to quickly look at dot because we're getting another similar pattern there it is see the breakout above the highs sitting on top of the highs and we're now waiting to break out of this next high at around 46 and a half dollars 47 so again similar pattern it's been really good for dot look at that 30 bucks was a fantastic buy and we're away dot has another big, been another big position of myself on the channel especially back down here at seven and also the breakout here of six dollars dot ethereum so we're just trading another breakout pattern that's all we're doing here ethereum usd breakout pattern can you see how they're very similar on the charts so we've got all the news to back up what's going on. We've got the Bitcoin dominance falling. We've got the breakout patterns on the charts. Let's hope we get a follow through with Ethereum. We've got the news coming up. I'm just a little concerned. I want to see this close above the highs only because the volume has been good on the breaks, but the following days are just a little bit sketchy. Could be a fake out back. I think we're going to go further north. I'm not 100%, but my probability say we are going north here. It's It's pretty much trade with the trend and the trend is up we're getting daily swings to the upside so let's keep that in mind as well doesn't look as strong as something like a Binance but it's getting there now on to XRP I know it's been the whole video and I'll get to it but XRP getting very close to that dollar mark now we did swing down to around 80 cents today and have we touched 99 and a half cents nearly there maybe by the time you see this video it touches a dollar it has been how long for the poor XRP hodlers uh, since it's been at a dollar? I have to go back to a weekly chart to even see anything. So last time XRP was at a dollar was back in April. It only just missed out 99 and a half cents again. So potentially February 2018, just as the bull market began to die. So this has been a long time, big, long wind up here, big wind up at this point and a, finally a break. A break above the 70 cent level, 80 cent, and the 90 cent all in one hit. Be careful with XRP. These XRP just shoots up for a few weeks and then it dumps. Even at its best, keep this in mind if you are trading XRP. One week, two, three, fourth week. This was the biggest pump in XRP's entire history. One, two, three, four weeks again. It, it looks like it can do a max of four weeks up. Just keep that in mind if you're trading XRP, not financial advice, no buy signals, sell signals. Just go back and look at the history of XRP and how much energy it has in the tank. When it does, it's the biggest moves that it can do. So just go back and have a look at that. I want to look at XRP BTC because this is the major, the major chart here for me. I want to increase my Bitcoin value, not just my USD value, especially if I'm taking the risk of buying something as volatile as XRP. We are breaking out on the Bitcoin value. And so we have the potential to come up and test some of these resistance levels or previously support may now become resistance. And how much percent do we have on that? Here's to the low 20%. 
Here's to the next area, somewhere around 90% to about 120%. And then if we take it all the way back to these previous highs in 2018, uh, that gets us to around 500% on our Bitcoin value. So that could be a little bit of a level there around 170% because we got a high back last year, these levels and these levels. So keep a watch out for 4,000 Satoshis. And then if it can get that far, probably around that six and a half to seven, and then back up to around 10,000 Satoshis if it ever gets there. All right, it doesn't have to get there, but they're just some levels that I'm watching. So there are some pretty good Bitcoin returns. Last crypto, XLM USD. This has started moving as well, but it hasn't broken these highs. XLM USD on Binance, obviously go back onto some other charts to see further data, but XLM came out into Binance in 2018, June 2018. All right, so we are starting to get that move. It's similar to XRP, but the, again, the main one is XLM BTC. BTC, look at this, nowhere. It has gone nowhere since July of 2019. Bitcoin value has gone nowhere. Keep that in mind. All right, this is, I'm just explaining the way I see things, especially for the education side. Uh, if you want to increase your USD holdings and Bitcoin holdings with lower risk, keep that in mind. I like XLM at the moment because it hasn't peaked. I think if it does peak, we'll probably get to uh, at least some sort of resistance if we, you know, hopefully we slice straight through it at around 1200 Satoshis. And from this point, 900, that's a solid 30%. Next point is on my chart here anyway, is two, uh, 2000 than 2,800. I'm not saying it's going to get there, but there are some targets in mind. I'm looking at around 30%, then at around 100%, 110%, and then around 200%. So a little less than potential on XR, uh, yeah, XRP, but it hasn't moved yet. And I think it has a little bit, it might, it might be a little bit easier to trade this one. That's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but I'm liking XLM because it hasn't broken out of this top just yet. So a little more risk on that one as well. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you very much. I hope you found a ton of value from that. If you did, let me know. Hit the like button down below. Make sure you are here before the scammers so we can chat briefly in the comments before the scammers get here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification icon. Uh, we've covered all the charts there. XRP looking good. Bitcoin, lots of big news coming up for it. It's still trading beneath its all-time highs. I think there is still two to three X according to Twitter uh, of how much we got left in this cycle to go. 35%, 31%, more and more votes coming in for six trillion and four trillion market caps. Currently we're at two trillion market cap. So go and check it out. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, daily Q and A's, live updates of my retirement fund. So if you want to know what's in my portfolio, Surprise, surprise, Bitcoin, Ethereum, but you get to see it on the daily, what's in there exactly and how to set up your own retirement fund with cryptocurrency. Check it out. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.